Well, hello again, friends. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and I am the pastor of St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Bryan College Station. This is, of course, Weekly Theistic Reflections, where each week I will take a verse of scripture, unpack it a little bit, talk about what's going in the context of that scripture, talk about how that scripture might relate to what's going on in our world today or just what's going on in my head. If you are new here, I invite you to take a look around the channel. Uh, if you like our content, please hit like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. As well as click that notification bell in order to be notified every single time I post a new video. I post a new video every single Thursday. And as always, if you think someone would benefit from this particular video, I invite you to share that video with them in order to to bless them. I have entitled this episode, Is There Evidence of Christ Living in You? The scripture that I chose for today comes from Romans chapter 7, verse 20. Here are the words of the Apostle Paul. Now I do what I do not want to do. But if I do that, it is no longer I that does it, but sin that dwells within me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so when I ask, is there evidence of Christ living within you? I don't mean uh, if we look around, can we see uh, whether or not we believe Christ is living in others, but really being able to ask yourself, how is my relationship with Christ? Um, because I think in our world, uh, when it comes to believers and their sin, we can take it one of two directions. We can either take our sin way too seriously and focus on it and let it bog us down, or we could take our sin not so seriously enough uh, and really rest in the grace message of God uh, without really examining our own hearts and taking a look at what's going on in there. And so uh, that's what I'm inviting you to do today. Uh, what's going on in your hearts? Uh, if you're a believer, where are you in your walk with Christ? Uh, how are you moving on down that relationship? I'll never forget when I was a youth pastor, it was my birthday. And I had a parent of one of the youth come up to me and say, happy birthday. I said, well, thank you. And then she asked me this question. She said, so how have you grown in your relationship with Christ over this past year? And that kind of took me aback because I had never really thought about that. Uh, to be honest, I had kind of uh, put my own relationship with Christ on the back burner because I had made it my profession to bring other people into relationship with Christ and, and help disciple them, uh, that I had almost done that age-old trap of I am doing so much to work for God and talk about God and study God that I'm not even focusing on actually having a relationship with God. Uh, and so it's good for us uh, as believers to, uh, apart from just reading scripture but actually, and uh, being in fellowship, making sure we go to church every single Sunday morning, making sure we're part of a small group, making sure we are loving uh, the disenfranchised and the poor among us and helping out to actually spend time building that relationship with God. Um, because uh, that is really what it's all about. We can know it up here without knowing it here. Or we can know it on a doctrinal level, but we don't actually live it out. Uh, and so how do we know if there's evidence of Christ living in us? I can tell you firsthand, as a pastor, um, I get convicted all the time with some of the things that I feel like the Holy Spirit has given me to preach uh, to my congregation. And sometimes I'll be writing my sermons like, ooh, that, that kind of hits me, God. Oh, I'm not really doing very well with that either, God. And, um, <clears throat> and I get convicted with that. I have this little thing that sits on my desk. Uh, it's kind of a two-way sign. And on one side, it says um, to the people who would be sitting down in my office, uh, you, parishioners are really nice and really welcoming until you try to sit in their pew. <laughs> and so I've had a couple of people laugh at that. But what many people don't know is on the other side of that picture, uh, to, so it's facing the pastor, it says it's easier to preach 10 sermons than to live out one of them. Uh, that's really true. Uh, because many times I have been convicted by the very words that I speak. But I want to say that that conviction is a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, what Paul is talking about in Romans is he's really expressing that emotion of like, I can't believe I'm doing the things that I know I'm not supposed to be doing. Um, like, I, I have seen Christ. Uh, you think about how Paul uh, just was opposing the church and he saw Christ firsthand. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Uh, was blinded for days uh, until Ananias came. And after all that, he still struggles with his faith. Uh, I take great courage and, and um, 
warmth in that. That uh, someone like even the Apostle Paul who saw Jesus face to face is saying, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of this death? Um, but what we get in this scripture today in, in Romans 7 is that Paul is saying that struggling with your sin is actually a good thing. Because if you struggle with your sin, then that is evidence that Christ is alive and well in you. Uh, it would actually be worse if you saw your sin, knew better, and didn't care anymore. Um, I think the downside of uh, living in grace too much is that we don't do anything with the sin that's within us and eventually we kind of become numb to it. We said, oh yeah, that thing there, yeah, I mean, I know that's something that me and God have to work out with, but there's still time. Um, and over time it gets bigger and bigger and eventually you're like, ooh, that has become my identity. But Paul here says, if I am struggling with my sin, then I indeed in my heart proclaim that God's law is good. No longer do I believe that this thing that's been living in me that I've been allowing to take shape is actually better than what God has for me. Uh, and so it is no longer I who believes in it, but the sin that is in me dying away. And so when I am struggling in my sin, I can say to myself, that's not me anymore. Sure, there's a conscious part of me that can choose to indulge in that or not, um, but that's not where my identity is. I could say as I'm struggling in my sin that that is the sin that is dying away within me, and I can live more and more into my true identity of Christ. Paul says, if I am choosing what God has for me over the stuff and the sin that I am regretting, uh, then I am claiming that God is good. Uh, and that that's really what I want. Uh, so I, that I see that there are two things at war within me, the sin that is dying and the righteousness of Christ that is growing and growing and growing in me. Uh, I read something on Facebook recently that said, the next time uh, the enemy tries to lay guilt at your feet by reminding you of your past, uh, you remind him of your future. Um, you tell him that you are redeemed, that yeah, on my own, I am not anything but dust, but by Christ I have been glorified and I am living into that. And so live into that, that identity. Lay down any guilt at the feet of your enemies and walk with Christ. Because conviction of sin is not a bad thing. Conviction of sin tells you that you care about what Christ is living inside of you saying. But wallowing in it is not what God wants us to do living it or wearing it in our identity as shame and broken. That's not what God wants us to do. That's what the enemy wants you to do. And so is there evidence of Christ living in you? Well, I would say, uh, are you convicted by your sin? If you're convicted by your sin, if you're wrestling with your sin, then you're actually in a good place. You're in a place that so many Christians have been throughout the centuries. But don't wear your sin as your identity anymore. See that for what it is, as just the, the dyingness uh, of your sin going away and fading away because it's not fit for eternity. Giving more and more residence to the Christ in your heart. And if you are too complacent with your sin, if you've kind of let it hang around for a while and you think, well, we'll get to that, or, you know, I know Christ loves me and he does but you can't take that with you and you're going to have to deal with it at some point and don't let something that is smaller become much much mightier in you um, deal with your sin take it seriously and know that christ has power to remove that from your life um, here's the question that i want you to ponder examine your sin how do you feel about it are you struggling with it or are you complacent with it or are you perhaps ignoring it altogether i would say if you're struggling with your sin you're in a good place, keep wrestling. If you are at the point where you are ignoring it altogether, maybe God is telling you to wake up to it. Shine light on the dark places of your heart and give Christ more residence there. And remember your real identity. You are not your sin. Your heart belongs to God. While you are here, I invite you to check out this video. Uh, it's a video I did uh, where I talk more about how um, God deals with us when we fall. Um, this is an episode where I talk about God recommissioning us, that when we screw up, uh, even if we know better, and that's the hard part, like God, I, uh, we've had these great experiences and yet I'm still like a dog going back to my vomit. Um, God doesn't cast us aside. God recommissions us and calls us back into his arms and even changes our identity in him. That is the glory 
of the gospel, friends. We just need to step into it. And so if you're still wrestling with assurance or um, your sin and, and want to watch more about this, check out that video um, on God recommissioning us. Next week, I want to talk about where does scripture offend you. If you are in the Bryan College Station area, I invite you to come out and take a look at us. We have a service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also live stream here uh, at Facebook where you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing. Worship services as well as uh, past videos that we've done there. You can kind of get an idea of who we are. Uh, but if you do come in person, we would love to welcome you, love to meet you in person. Just make sure you continue to wear a mask because we are social distancing. But until then, friends, don't forget to whom you belong. As John, as James says in chapter 1, 22 through 24, don't forget your image in the mirror and go back to your sin or become complacent, complacent with your sin. Your image is now Christ. And so live into that and continue to love each other well as you become more and more the person that God is calling you to be. Take care, friends.